Today, David Hartman, aka the Sideshow Monkey, and I will be facing off in an epic monster battle, both designing a monster to face off in the octagon. So stay tuned to check out my fighter. Hey guys, Hattie the Creator here, creating something new to share with you. And as you just saw, I'm going to be creating a monster today to face off against David Hartman. David Hartman and I are both going to be creating and designing a monster to fight one another. And we're counting on you guys, the audience, to help us vote on and decide the winner of this battle. So an epic monster battle, huh? How's that gonna work? So how this works is we are each going to be competing head to head in a epic monster battle for a monster belt. To win this belt, the first step in series of videos is this one that I am doing today. Both David Hartman and I, Hattie the Creator, will be designing a monster from scratch. We will take into consideration each other's styles and creatures that we have drawn in the past, scout out each other's work, and try to design a monster that we feel will defeat them in their strengths. We each make a video of our drawing process and design out this monster, and then we will each do an epic illustration of our monster creation. The next step is we will both record our reactions to one another's monsters, and then we will each illustrate a scene of our monsters fighting in which our monster has the advantage, showing off his moves or his strengths. Once these illustrations are done, we will post them as well as a link to a live survey site, and we will invite you, the spectators of this fight, to vote on which one you think will win. You're not necessarily voting on which monster you think looks the coolest, but which monster would win based on its strengths and its advantages and its design in comparison to the other monster. We will then leave the poll open for a few weeks and let the votes come in and then we will move on to step three. Step three, only the winner by poll will be making a video in which they will win the belt and gloat about it and then they will illustrate their monster standing victoriously over the opponent's monster. At the end of that video they can then challenge another artist and the cycle will continue. He and I got to talking over Instagram and we thought this would be a fun idea. It's kind of a collaboration we both kind of came up with together. This might be the first of a series, unless of course I lose, then it will be the only video of this sort on my channel. So both this video today and my next video will be related to this monster battle. So the first thing I need to do is figure out a monster that I want to use and battle against one of his. David Hartman does a lot of undead, a lot of werewolves, a lot of fleshy, organic creatures. So I'm going to try to design a character that I feel can hold his own against those characteristics and let's see what I can do. I'm gonna jump to the overhead camera and start on paper and just kind of throw out some ideas and see what comes out of them. So going into this, I really don't have many clues as to what I want to do. So for this first monster, I'm thinking something with some big sharp claws and maybe some big horns or some sort of pincers on his head. Something that could tear apart flesh pretty easily. Under the assumption that David Hartman goes with some sort of zombie or werewolf type creature, I'd like him to have something to keep some distance to be able to slice up the flesh of the opponent. Gonna make some bloody octagon flooring. But monsters, man, they don't play by any rules. They don't have any values. Last one breathing wins. So I'm thinking this guy's gonna be pretty, pretty violent. I'm just doing really rough sketch too. This is the first one So I'm expecting to kind of get the bad ones out of the way and hopefully come up with some cool sketches and some cool character Concepts just doing some really rough kind of scribble sketching with the pencil And then I'm going in with the pen just kind of define values a little bit better and pop them up a little bit more And make it kind of read a little bit. I'm not really expecting anything too pretty out of this session I'm gonna try some different angles and some different concepts of the same character and then I will move on to another one Another one so for the second one, continuing on with the idea to try to keep some distance between the two creatures, I decided to try some worm creatures. And I just started drawing these out with some sharp teeth, big old long neck worm. And then I thought, what if this was an arm? And this creature had these big old worm-like arms. And so I started playing with that idea and kind of connected him to a mech body. And I thought a mech body would be perfect to kind of protect its vitals in the middle, especially if David Hartman goes with something with claws as well. That way the core of my creature will be safe and protected. And these long worm-like arms will be able to keep some distance between the two and I started getting really excited about this idea. So then the idea evolved into what if these are two worm creatures inside of this suit that are kind of fed through the suit and so the heads are the arms and then the lower half of the worms are the legs. I thought that could give them some interesting maneuverability, kind of have them slide sideways and back and forth, forward and backwards without having to necessarily take big steps and strides. That way making them a little bit more unpredictable and his movements around in the arena. I don't know if this is actually cheating because at this point there's actually two creatures and then I need something to drive it. So 
something to be in the center. Now going into this, I fully expected to fill out maybe two or three pages with different concepts and ideas, but after drawing this one, I just fell in love with it and I decided to go with it. I just thought it was a lot of fun, a fun concept, a monster that David couldn't have predicted, something completely out of left field. I do feel a little guilty for having him be kind of cheating, being three different monsters, but I'm going to think of a way to kind of link them all together and make them all using one mind. So I don't know if you caught it at the end there, but what I decided to be the driver is a cat. So a cat is going to be the mastermind behind this monster, but not just any cat. You see, this is going to be some scientifically enhanced cat that has a mega mind and kind of walks upright so that he can drive and pilot this thing. This cat has constructed himself a suit to house these worms and to kind of tame them down. And somehow he's tapped into these worms nervous system. I'm kind of imagining that these worms are blind and kind of helpless creatures on their own, but with the help of the cat and with him tapping in and controlling them, they together become a force to be reckoned with, if you will. I'm gonna step in the octagon with a kitty. How you like them apples? So let's jump in and draw this character. I brought a picture from my sketchbook into Photoshop and now I'm gonna bust out a sketch. And once the sketch is done, I need to pop the top off a drink and jump into my favorite part, the line art. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping me fill up my fridge. Now I have some drinks. Today I'm drinking an Arizona Razzleberry Peace Tea. I love these things. Now let's get it. So as I was drawing this character, as you can imagine, I had a lot of time to think and I kind of thought up a backstory for this creature. So I'm going to go ahead and show that to you right now before I reveal the final monster. There was once a scientist revolutionary who won a Nobel Prize by the time he was 22 for his breakthroughs in genome editing. He was recruited by the shadow government and confined to a lab with only the company of his orange tabby cat 
and a handful of earthworms. The scientist found a way to manipulate the earthworm DNA to multiply in size and strength. The shadow government wanted them to burrow holes and to perform silent executions. The closer he got to achieving his goal in isolation, the more his mind had drifted into obscurity and madness. The tabby cat was once his loving companion, his dearest friend. But then the cat began to be a distraction from his lust for power and accomplishment. He figured out how to control his worms with his mind, tapping into their nervous system with his thoughts alone. Prior to his breakthrough on his worms, he experimented with his cat to multiply his mind power in hopes that he could enjoy intellectual conversations with him. But he abandoned the experiments when the tabby cat did not progress as quickly as he had hoped, although the error was his. Feeling neglected, abused, and envious of the worms, Tabby released them while the scientist was distracted in calculation and formulation. And then, they ate him. Tabby's brain power continued to grow, and his skills increased. He taught himself to build, to program. He continued the scientist's works with the worms, and he developed a powerful link with them. They were one another's family. Tabby implanted a link between them and his own brain so that they could share minds at will and potentially act as one. Tabby machined a powerful suit to house the worms so that together they became the Abortion. my monster i'm pretty happy with them i wonder how david hartman's gonna feel about facing off against a cat if his monster gets beat by a simple cat he might be a little devastated this cat's coming for you david mr sideshow monkey you gonna get it you gonna get it this cat's gonna come in and take your monster and crush him in half his monster hands are gonna bite you and chomp down on your fleshy monster's arms and body crush his ribs rip out his bones and his tugs are gonna wrap around his neck and choke him we're gonna get you <laughs> Was that convincing? Little trash talk before the WWF fights. So that's my video, that's my creature. Remember you two are creators. Get out there and create something new. Character design was a lot of fun. It's fun to play with some different concepts and ideas, kind of how I did today. Just have fun with the whole process. Remember to stay motivated, keep creating, and kick comfort in the booty. Kick that comfort in the butt. Creatives ain't got no place for comfort. We gotta keep on growing and keep on producing and keep on learning from it. Thank you so much for being here, guys. I really appreciate all of you. And I wanna thank my patrons especially because they are helping support me and funding me as I put together these videos and this content for you. If you are feeling extra generous and have a little disposable income, you wouldn't mind sharing with a wonderful creator. There's a link to my Patreon account down below. I have a few tiers. There's the base tier for $1 just to be a supporter. Then I have a $5 tier, which will earn your name in the end of my videos just like this one. The $10 tier is a sticker club, so you will get two unique stickers from me every month in the mail. And then I have a $30 tier, which is basically a t-shirt club and the sticker club combined. So you'll be getting a unique t-shirt designed by me once a month, as well as a couple of stickers. All of these tiers also come with a discount code for my Etsy shop. And they all earn you a piece of my heart and my appreciation. Again, I don't expect that out of anybody. Just watching my videos is a huge support already. So thank you so much for being here. You guys are all very wonderful. I appreciate every single one of you. Even that handful of you that just wants to thumb down my videos. There's always a few of you rambunctious scallywags in the bunch. But hey, thank you for being here too, because hey, you're still helping me out. And that's all I got for you today. And stay tuned for the next video where we put together some fight scenes of our two epic monsters, and then we will ask you all to jump in and vote on which one you think will win. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun putting together that backstory specifically. It was kind of fun to tell a story with this character. I kind of like him. He's kind of grown on me. He's quite a weird mashup of bits and organic pieces, but he's kind of cool. This has been Hattie the Creator, and I will catch you on that next video. Oh, and uh, peace out. Shit.
Bones! <laughs>